Good morning. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to position more than two boxes in a row. Uh, this can be two, three boxes, it can be five boxes, it can be as many uh, boxes as you would really that you would like to position in a row. Um, and it's not as difficult as it, as it seems. Uh, and by boxes, I mean images or areas that you can have text, as we know, uh, every single um, element that we create on a web page is essentially a, a box. Uh, what this really requires is understanding a little bit of the math that is associated with web design, um, very basic math, and creating divisions and classes uh, that will allow you to position these. Now, uh, as we know from our uh, prior videos, um, we're always looking at things in terms of 100% uh, when, when we're positioning. Uh, so if we want to have three boxes, like right here in this row under a heading, we need to think about these three boxes occupying a space or another box, which is sort of invisible um, here, that is 100%. And nothing can go over 100% uh, when we're putting things inside of a box. When that happens, you have boxes dropping down to other rows. Uh, so we want to make sure that each of these boxes are occupying the same percentage so that they are taking the same amount of space. That is including the margins between the boxes. Now, let's try this uh, very quickly. So we have three boxes. It might make sense to um, create a new layer here. Uh, make each of these boxes uh, 30%. Okay. 30%, 30%, Now, as we know, 30 plus 30 plus 30 equals 90%, okay? Which leaves 10%, and we do that, we will get 100%, right? So, if we want to get close to 100%, which will allow us to position things properly on our page, uh, what we need to do is figure out how much of these margins um, we need to add styling for. Uh, because our width right now that we're going to be creating for each of our elements is going to be 30%. Um, to do that, we have to figure out how many left and right margins we actually have uh, in our row. And to do this, we have one, one left margin, two left margins, three left margins, and then we have one right margin, two right margin, and three right margin. So that gives us a total of six margins. Okay. Now, in order to figure out the widths of those six margins so that each one is equal, what we need to do is we need to divide 10 divided by 6, okay? We have 10% left remaining to get to 100, and we have 6 margins here, 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 and here, those 6, that need to be styled to get us close to that. Now, 10 divided by 6 is equal to 1.65%. Uh, okay. So when we actually style this, we are going to give the margin left and margin right widths of 1.65%. And by having each of these be 30%, um, and then with, the, with these 1.65, we're going to get close to 33% total width for each element, which will get us very close to 100%, which puts, should put things virtually in the center, which is typically what we want want to have happen when we're in a row. So the CSS for this, create another new layer here, will look something like this. Um, now I like to create um, my classes 
when I'm creating boxes, as you know, I like to create classes and name them something that's similar or related to the content that's going to be there. So I'm going to call this one three, dot three, uh, because there are three boxes here. When I create a row of five, the way I do all this is I create a class called five. That way I know that I'm styling and positioning five elements. Now I'm going to give this a float left. All right. Now what's really interesting about floats is that, as we've done before, is we've floated some things on the left and some things on the right, um, which is perfect for two elements. Uh, what's really interesting is that when you have multiple elements or multiple boxes or things that are in a row, more than two, you float each of them left. And what happens is the browser by default just automatically pops them next to each other until you get to a div class clear and or you get to 100% of a width, and then it will drop it down. So we're going to be floating each of these to the left, and we'll see this in the code in a second. I'm going to give it a width of 30%, and I'm going to give it a margin left of 1.65%, and a margin right 1.65%. So this is how we set up the CSS uh, for this styling. We, we're creating a class called 3. We're going to float everything to the left. We're going to give it a width, each element here, a width of 30%. You might choose you want to make it 32%. That would be fine. That would change your margins. You would divide um, let's see, 32% is 98, uh, 96%, you would design, and then you would do 4, because 4% uh, divided by 6 would give you a different margin size, okay? Um, so for our HTML, since we're creating a class, we would do something like this. Div class equals three. And we will close that div. Now, what's interesting about this uh, is that we would basically be repeating the same code down the page uh, because each of these class, each of these elements is going to have the same properties div class three, div class three, div class equals three. Um, the only thing that's going to be changing is the image and the alt text associated with the image uh, that we have. So let me show you what this looks like uh, in real life in brackets uh, as we're doing our code. Um, so I've already gone into um, my portfolio. Now my portfolio page looks like this currently. Um, and I'm going to add a row above this chocolate series uh, that's going to have a different uh, different images. Um, you could have whatever you want in there. I'm using photos just because what, what I got. Um, and so I've already created the default, some of the default structure here. Um, I'm creating a new heading, plastic camera series. These are photos that are taken with plastic toy cameras. Um, I've got my header and my section because that goes every time you have a heading, you need a header. Every time you have a header, you have a section. Okay. So then I'm going to start row one because I might have multiple rows of this, and I always like to give myself notes that I'm starting row one, and I'm going to begin my first image here. And as we know from the HTML we just popped there, I'm going to div class equals three, because I'm going to have three photos. Um, and I always like to put a little note letting me know this is my first image. I have a figure, and then I have my image. And I have my image as well, spray.jpg. I end my figure, and I end my first image. Okay. So I'm going to add the next image now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that code, paste it here, and I'm going to say second image. So I know my second image is beginning, and I'm going to end my second image. So I know it ends right there. And then I'm just going to delete the name of the, the image file. And then I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to say, let's put in giraffes. Nah, yeah, we'll put giraffes in there. Actually, 
I don't want giraffes. Let me change your mind. And you obviously are welcome to change your mind. I'm going to put Cafe Du Monde in there. Boom. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this again. So I'm going to have a third image. Pop this in. Third image. And third image. And here I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to pop in giraffes. Okay. Now I'm not adding the alternate title text right now because I don't have. Well, that will take a lot, a lot of your time, and I don't want to waste your time uh, watching more of the video than you need to. Okay. So now let's just see as I'm saving this uh, if those images do all appear on the page as I would like. So I'm going to go save my portfolio, upload it like that. I'm going to go to my website. I click refresh, and what I hope to see is a new header and three images. One, two, three. Okay, those are my three images, all taken with toy cameras, taken with the Diana, and these two are taken with uh, Holgas. Okay, so now we need to make sure or try to get it so we have the um, images side by side. So I'm basically going to add this styling to my CSS, to my main.css. And I'm going to put it right over here underneath the uh, floating of the right. I'm going to call it dot three. Very exciting. I don't really like how it does that. I want it over there. Um, and I'm going to give it a float of left. I'm going to give it a um, width of 30%, margin left 1.65%, and margin right 1.65%. Cool. All right. All right, so we see I'm floating everything to the left, width, margin, so on. Okay, now let's upload this. Go back to my web page. And now what I hope to see is that these images will all pop into a nice little row. Ready? Let's give it a go. Boom. There it is. Um, and they are all uh, side by side. Uh, the images are not exactly the same because the, they're not the total the same size. But you can see that if I needed to adjust the sizes of these images to get them in a row, uh, I can do that. Now, what's really cool is that if I want to make a second row, you, I can use the same code. What I would do first is I have to add my div class equals clear to it, so those elements are cleared. And then all I have to do is copy this code, the whole thing. I copy it, I paste it in underneath and then I will say start row two, okay? And this might actually be my, my fourth image, my fifth image, and my sixth image, right? And I can save this and I can now uh, go back to FileZilla, refresh it, go back to my portfolio, upload, go back to my web page, refresh, and we'll see now I have a second row of images. Um, and it is responsive. You can see because we, everything is percentage-wise, it all stays responsive. Very nice. And that's how that that's how that works. Um, so what I you can also <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now one thing I'm seeing here is that the images are not fully taking up a width. I don't think. So let me go back to my code because I'm wondering why this is so wide. 
Um, my go to my figure, ah, my figure width is only 80%. I'm going to bump this up to 100, and we'll see the, the change that takes place here. There we go. That's what I want to see. Um, now everything is nice, nice and big. If you need to, you can create a, a, a box around this to get some margins in there, or you just give everything a little margin top, um, and it will push things down a little bit. And uh, this is how we create our rows uh, in this way. Now, if you had five images, like we want, we thought about having, I mentioned you would have five, you just do your math. You figure this is 19, 19, 19, 19, and 19%, because that will give you nearly 100%, uh, 95, I do math off the top of my head, um, and uh, then you figure out what your margin widths are going to be in, very this, in exactly the same way. You can have 10 images if you want to go across like that. Your images can be multiple sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. If that's the case, you create different class names for them, and, but everything would be floated left when it's in the same row. Uh, so give it a try. Let me know how it goes. And if you have questions, you know, as always, let me know. Happy to help. Have a great day. Bye-bye.